Thank you, uh, Peter. Well, as you'll all be aware, recent years have seen growing concerns about inequality, not just between people, but between places. And the new Johnson government has made levelling up its mantra. And as Ben was saying, you can expect to see changes to public spending and potentially taxes as a result of this. But what are the economic facts underlying these very real concerns? And what um, are the trends in inequalities at a geographical level across regions and across local areas uh, in the country? And that's what I want to talk about in this presentation, focusing on uh, productivity, earnings, incomes and wealth. And this is a preview of a new report we have out next week as part of the Deaton Review, which is a much broader look at inequalities across uh, the whole of the UK and the developed world, which looks at other important areas like uh, health, education, um, life chances as well. But let's start by looking at how um, productivity, earnings and incomes vary across the regions of the UK. And this graph will show for each of those indicators, how each region compares to the average for the UK as a whole. And I'll set that to 100 for ease of comparison. And the first indicator I wanted to look at uh, is the amount of output produced per hour worked by people in different parts of the country. And that's important because it's a measure of the productivity of people in different parts of the country. And productivity is a key determinant of earnings and hence living standards. And we can see that uh, productivity per hour is 133% of the UK average in London. And the only other area where it's above the UK average is the southeast of England. That's followed by Scotland, the other regions of uh, England, and Wales and uh, Northern Ireland uh, bring up the rear. And you can see there that the figure for Wales is 84% of the UK average. Now, another way of putting that is that the uh, average person in Wales needs to work for around an hour and 35 in order to produce the same amount as the average person in London produces in one hour. Now, these big differences in uh, productivity across the country translate into big differences in the mean full-time earnings of people in different parts of the country. And again, they're around a third higher than uh, the average for London and about 15% uh, below the average for Wales. And that, uh, again, means that the average person um, in Wales on the mean uh, full-time wage needs to work for about an hour and 35 to earn as much as the uh, average person in London on the mean uh, full-time wage there it would do in um, one hour. But many of these differences are being driven by what's happening at the top of the earnings distribution. If you look at the very top, um, around 30% of Londoners uh, earn more than £50,000 a year if they're working full-time. That compares to around 10% for those in the North East, uh, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So these top earnings are dragging up the mean in London and pulling down uh, the mean in the rest of the country. So if we look at median earnings, so that's the earnings of the person in the middle of the income or the earnings distribution in each region, the differences are a bit narrower. So median full-time earnings in London are about a fifth higher than in the rest of the country, sorry, than in the rest of the country. Um, in the northeast, they were about 10% lower. And again, to think about that, that means uh, some of the northeast on the median uh, earnings there would need to work about 1 hour 20 to earn the same as someone in London uh, on median earnings would earn in one hour. But, of course, once you have your earnings, you need to pay uh, some taxes on them and you receive some benefits. And we have a redistributive tax and benefit system in this country, which as well as redistributing from rich to poor households, as Ben was saying, redistributes from richer to poorer regions. So differences in disposable household income are again a bit smaller. Uh, median um, uh, household income before housing costs in London is about 13% above the uh, UK average, and in the area with the lowest, it's about 8% uh, below the UK average. You can see uh, my country here doing pretty badly on all these measures so far. But we also know that cost of living varies around the country as well. And the cost of living is generally higher in areas with higher incomes, and that's particularly true for housing costs. So housing costs tend to be higher in areas where uh, incomes are higher. And that's particularly true for London. So after kind of a housing costs, median household income in London 
is no higher than the national average. The highest area is the southeast of England, uh, with about 110% of the UK average, and the lowest region is Wales, with about 94% of the UK average. And we can see by looking across the graph is that several factors. First, the, the differences between what's happening at the top of the distribution and in the middle of the distribution. Um, the impact of the tax and benefit system and differences in uh, the cost of living mean that as you move from productivity through to, I guess, a better measure of what you think about being as living standards, the gaps look a bit narrower. But that's not to say these, these first uh, differences I showed you, the differences in productivity, are unimportant. They are very important, and I'll come back to that uh, a bit later. Of course, it's not just the, the middle incomes, the middle earnings that matter. Uh, what's happening at the top and the bottom can be quite different, and these are important too. And to sort of slightly misquote, London is a tale of two cities. Um, Londoners are both 50% more likely to be in the top 10% of the income distribution, but also 25% more likely to be in poverty after housing costs. Wales, uh, which looks like one of the poorer regions, uh, what's really driving that is that they're 40% less likely to be in the top 10% of the income distribution in Wales. Actually, only 8% were likely to be in after housing cost poverty. So poor regions are poor largely because they have few high-income households, not because they have very many poor households. But of course, that is what's happened um, uh, at the moment. How have things been changing over time? So if we look back over the period since the early 2000s, we can see that productivity in uh, London has grown at broadly the same pace as in the rest of the UK. It was growing more rapidly in the 80s and 90s in London, but since the kind of turn of the millennium, that trend has sort of abated. Earnings, on the other hand, have been growing less quickly in London than in the rest of the country. Uh, that's particularly true for mean earnings, uh, but it's also the case for median earnings. And two factors are driving that. Uh, first is that we notice more generally, earnings at the top of the distribution have actually been performing less well since the recession uh, than earnings further down the distribution. And London, with many people at that top, top part of the distribution, has been more affected by that. And at the other end of the scale, the national minimum wage and the national living wage have been boosting uh, earnings at the bottom. Few people in London are on that, so London wages have benefited less from those. Um, when we look at household incomes, um, before housing cost incomes, though, despite this poor earnings growth, they've been keeping pace in London, the rest of the country, and that's been driven by strong growth in employment in London. Employment in London was way below the UK average previously. It has now moved up towards the UK average, and we've seen similar trends in cities across the UK. They've caught up with the suburbs and the countryside when it comes to employment. Uh, looking at after housing cost income, though, again, we see this lag in London. And that means that a lot of the benefits from these higher employment in London have been taken up in higher housing costs. And that reflects a few factors. Uh, rents are higher and have been going up more quickly in London. More Londoners rent than in the rest of the country. And Londoners' mortgage costs have also not fallen as much despite the big cuts in interest rates. And that's because house prices have risen so much in London, so the size of mortgages people have to take have increased. So the mortgage interest costs have not fallen as much as elsewhere. But of course, the flip side of that is if you're on the property market in London, you've done pretty well in terms of your wealth, even if your income is under strain. So this graph shows the levels of um, property and financial wealth across the different regions. And we can see that in the mid-2000s, um, there was already quite significant differences between wealth in London and the south of the, uh, England and uh, the rest of the country. And what we've seen over the last 10 years or so is a big uh, increase in those degrees of inequality. So uh, mean wealth for London households has increased by about 150%. Um, mean wealth for those in the southeast by about 50%, whilst in the northeast of England, around 3%. So trends in the housing market, whilst they've been squeezing incomes in London, and to some extent the southeast, they've been pushing up wealth, at least for those who are already on the property market. Our report also looks at what's happening to local level inequalities, and these are often very significant as well, indeed more significant than um, what is happening at a regional level. So just to show one example of this, this graph will show the median full-time earnings for each local authority compared to the national average separately by the different regions of the UK. 
and the sort of inequality between different local authority areas is highest uh, in London. Um, for example, uh, median full-time earnings in Kenston and Chelsea are around 50% um, higher than the uh, national average. Um, in Barking and Dagenham, they're about 5% lower than the national average. There's also some inequality uh, between local authorities in the east and southeast of England, and this seems to be linked to sort of commuting patterns. So the highest uh, earnings are in East Hertfordshire and Elmbridge in these regions, about 40% above the national average, and these are two sort of commuting hotspots. If I get on the train in these areas, you'll, you'll know that. Earnings are much lower further away from London, though. In North Norfolk and Hastings, they're about 15 to 20% below the national average. Uh, these are areas where it's um, more time-consuming, more costly uh, to, com to commute to London, and hence far fewer people do. They work locally where wages are lower. Now, inequality between earnings in different regions, the other regions of the UK, are somewhat lower, but you can still see there's significant variation within regions elsewhere. And again, this does seem to link to commuting patterns. So, for example, the highest areas in the northwest, uh, West Midlands and Scotland, are Trafford, um, Solihull, and East Renfrewshire. So, sort of, you know, well-to-do commuter areas for Manchester, Birmingham, and Glasgow. Uh, areas, again, further away from these cities tend to have uh, somewhat lower uh, earnings. Or areas near them, actually, sometimes, where people just don't really want to live and don't really want to commute from. Now, what, again, what's happened to these trends? Well, geographic inequality in earnings has fallen since the late 2000s, and that's affecting the two factors I mentioned earlier. Uh, bigger falls in earnings at the top of the distribution and uh, increases in minimum wage levels. Now, these uh, patterns and trends sort of across local authorities across the whole country could be hiding important uh, information about certain types of places doing particularly well or doing particularly poorly. And recent years have seen a particular concern about several kinds of places. Uh, so, for example, uh, former industrial towns in the North and Midlands, uh, coastal communities. Uh, so we broke down the local authorities into these different groups to see what was happening for these different kinds of areas. And what we find is that actually earnings and household incomes tend to be higher in the towns and country surrounding cities than the cities themselves. Uh, the big exception for that is London, where many of the, the most affluent high-earning people actually live quite centrally in the city. Um, the pattern is a bit different further away from the, the cities. The rural areas and towns further away from the cities do tend to lag uh, cities somewhat. Actually, earnings and incomes for residents of towns in the countryside have grown slightly faster than cities since the early 2000s, despite this sort of idea that the cities have been, you know, pulling ahead. Although there is a little bit of evidence that cities' relative performance has been improving since the financial crisis over the last couple of years. And if you look at those former industrial towns in the north and Midlands and the coastal towns, well, they've grown at broadly the same pace in terms of earnings and incomes as the rest of the country since the early 2000s. But they've not really made up for the previous lost ground uh, that took place in the 70s and 80s when sort of the deindustrialization and the change in um, holiday habits sort of really dragged down these incomes in the first place. So what do I think the kind of key takeaway messages are from uh, this analysis? Well, we've seen that there are significant inequalities in earnings, although redistribution and differences in cost of living mean that uh, the differences in after-household um, costs, incomes, are smaller. And both of these have been slightly falling over time. And I think that begs the question, why have concerns grown so much in recent years about this issue? I think there are kind of several factors, there are many possible reasons. I wanted to kind of raise uh, three of them, potentially. Uh, first is that whilst we've seen a small decline in earnings and incomes inequalities, these big changes we saw in the 70s and 80s, this big rise of regional inequality that took place then, the impact of the deindustrialization is still with us. It's not really abated. This, you know, what people might have thought is a temporary shock has become a permanent shock that areas are only slightly recovering from. That probably matters more to people. These things are lasting longer. Secondly, we have seen a stagnation of earnings and incomes for everyone in the last uh, 10 years. And perhaps it's the case that when everyone's boats are rising, it doesn't feel quite so bad if your boat is rising a bit less than everyone else than if we're all stuck in the mud. And I also think that it's important to note that I've looked at earnings and incomes and wealth. Uh, other things might matter as well. 
So we saw that wealth inequality is going up, and wealth can be very important for the sense of security and for the opportunities they have to sort of move around, take advantage of job opportunities elsewhere where housing costs are higher, say. And also we know that things like education, health, uh, life chances, they matter. And there is a growing body of evidence suggesting that different things are happening there. Schools have improved a lot in London. University access has been increasing in cities, but stagnating in more rural and former industrial areas. So further research uh, in our review will be looking at these areas. I think it's also important to, to notice that there are differences at the top and the bottom of the earnings and income distributions. Uh, London has both lots of high income households and lots of poverty after housing costs. And those poor regions are poor largely because they have few high earners, not because they have real uh, large numbers of poor households. And that relates to another issue, that there are big differences in earnings and incomes between LAs within regions that seem to be linked to commuting patterns to high-paid jobs in major cities. And I think what this is telling us is that different parts of the country are facing different problems. So the big problem in London and the southeast is high housing costs. That is making the cost of living uh, very high for particularly poor households, leading to higher rates of poverty, and for those not on the property ladder, making, making life somewhat difficult. In the rest of the country, the issue seems to be more that there are low productivity and few high-paying jobs. And when the government is thinking about its strategy for levelling up the economy and for where it invests money, taking into account these different needs and different issues in different parts of the country is likely to be very important. Thank you. <laughs>